Yo ho ho! It's another Christmas painting and today I'm going to show you how to paint an easy, super lovely Christmas tree painting tutorial in acrylics. <laughs> I have to say it like that. And look at it shimmer. If you don't have metallic gold paint though, you don't have to do that part. All you're gonna need is a few supplies to paint this. I'm using watercolor paper. This paper right here is 140 pounds and I recommend that or heavier or you're gonna find that your paper buckles. You also need just a few brushes and I have a link to these brushes down below and all the rest of the supplies. So I'm just using an inch wash brush here and then this is a size eight round brush and this is there's two detailed brushes right here. And then I have my half an inch flat brush. So I'm using the same palette as last year because it's a very fun, colorful palette. And we will be mixing from that. So you will wanna get that video to help you mix along. You click right here, become a Create Flart member, and you can have the same palette as me. Now you don't necessarily have to use all the same colors as me. So then all you need is paper towels and you're ready to paint. Now I'm gonna take my light blue, that's from my palette. And I'm gonna start right here. And I'm just gonna move up like this. My I'm going to leave this nice and soft back here. I'm going in a circular motion with my brush because this is the snow back here. It kind of just blends up with the sky. Now I'm going to take my dark blue color and I'm going to go from the top and let the color just blend right into so I have to have a little bit of water on my brush just to get it to slide easy and not skip. Okay. And I'm gonna let that dry and then I can blend a little bit better between here. So while that's drying, I can go ahead and make an in-between color with my dark blue and my light soft turquoise color. And just lets this be a little bit softer of a transition when I go in between here. I want to make sure that it's light enough that I'll make a nice blend. And I'm just going to take some of the light color and go right up here in the middle just so it's more of a triangle shape. I'm just taking a paper towel because this is a little more difficult on paper and smoothing and blending these two. Now you can make this as smooth as you want. If you're doing this on a canvas, it's obviously gonna be a lot smoother and easier to blend. Since I'm doing this on a piece of paper, this is what I'm gonna work with. So I'll just get it to the point that you're happy with it. So once you're ready to move on, grab your toothbrush Dabble it in some water so that it's not dripping, but there's water in there. And then take your white, and I like to add just a little bit of the blue to my white. And then I just take my brush and I splatter. Now the further you are away, the more likely the splatters will be um, further apart and bigger. So you can kind of experiment with how you like it. So now I'm just going to take my really, really light, almost white color and just pull that down to the bottom. Now, as I get closer to the bottom, I'm going to let it be even lighter. And then it's the whitest down here. So just make sure your canvas or your paper's all covered now this next step is where you get your iridescent gold color out. This is really going to make the background have some bling. So now I'm going to take my small round brush 
and I'm going to start putting in the trees in the background. So I'm going to just start on this side and position my brush down and then I'm just going to come out from that middle part and then end from the middle going out. So just very very easy to make a tree. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if it does look perfect, then it sometimes just is really distracting and fake looking. So I just pull out from the middle and I let it be kind of sporadic. And then when you get to the bottom, you're pulling away from the bottom and then pulling out. So pulling down from the bottom and pulling out. So you're going to have a tree line of these. So just make some variation in your trees back here. And because it's metallic it'll be shimmery and also it will be transparent, a lot more transparent than you're used to with paints. So we may need to go over it a couple times just to make it so that it's not transparent. That's just the way that um, metallic paints are. You can't find them with no transparency which means you can see the colors behind. Right, so you want to let the bottoms just end at different spots, not the same one. So I'm just going to pull this tree down just a little bit more. So when you're going on this side and you're making your tree line, you can just start here and because this is back further, I'm just taking the gold and making pokes and then pulling down. And this is going to give it some more depth back here. So you're seeing this golden line of trees and then I just pull away from it to show it's foggy. And then I'll have some trees in front of it. Okay, so underneath the trees I'm just going to pull a little bit of my dark blue and pull it into the bottom of the tree. I'm going to lighten it just a little bit because the contrast is a little high. Just to show that there's some shadow here and then I'll blend it on the edge. The blue with the gold is so pretty. that gold all the way across here. And some of it will be covered. So now I'm just going to put in some of the dark blue trees back here. So there's some gold ones and then there's some darker blue ones. So it just gives some variety to it. So I'm just going to come here with my dark blue. And this time I'm going to leave some gaps in between just for some fun. Now you can do this with a fan brush or a different brush if you find like you don't like how your marks are being made. So if you have a fan brush you can use that too. I'm just going to make one right here. I just find that I don't have as much control with the fan brush but it makes a kind of different look. It's completely up to you what you want to do. And the reason why I didn't put the blue down first over because the gold over it would show um, 
the dark blue, so I have to go around my gold. Right here. You can make your trees however you want, how many you want, all that jazz. Okay, so that's the background. So basically all we're doing is making a line. And the line ends in the middle about right here. So it's gonna start about right here. So about an inch and a half away from the top and come down to the middle. You could also do this with your round brush. It's just a little harder to keep it straight. So I'll use a flat brush. My kids are doing um, some Christmas paintings as well and they used my brushes and I don't know where they're at now so so now I'm grabbing my dark green color I'm starting at the very top and I'm gonna be moving out with like a dabbing motion and your tree will probably look a little different than mine because you have different brush strokes or whatever and that's okay no big deal so it's small and then it just gets bigger as we go down and I like to start going like this and I'll show you too how to do it with a fan brush because I know a lot of you wonder how to use a fan brush and it'll give you a, a slightly different look but this is how it looks with a fan brush you just pull away from it from the center can decide whatever brush you want to use. You could even use your round brush. I'll show you what that looks like. It's for a slightly different look. It's all going to appear like a tree anyway, so it's no big deal. And then notice how I'm fanning out even wider. So it's like a little triangle. Just keep going. Covering up some of your background is okay. You didn't need it all anyways. All right, I'm just gonna do a little bit more. Some thick ones down here. Notice how I'm going down now. And this line is gonna be completely covered up. All the way to the bottom. And then I pull out in the front. I'm just going to grab a little bit of my black mixed with my green. It's my darkish green color. I'm just going to come in here in the middle and find some spots and push out. Mostly in the middle and you can skip whole areas like that. Adding just a little bit more color with the greens, with the blacks, and making it thicker. This is going to help this tree out, have a little bit more dimension here. You can make your tree as fuzzy or as thick as you would like. The next thing I like to do is I actually like to grab some of that blue that's in the sky and add it to my tree. And this creates harmony. Just a little bit goes a long way, so you don't need much. This is how I really like to play with color as well. Now you can grab that same blue color and your brush, and you wanna make sure the value is darker than your um, white here but not too dark, and you're gonna add in shadow down here, right under this tree. So I'm gonna pull up right up next to the branches. And then when it comes out, I pull out. When it goes in, I stay in. 
I'm gonna pull out just a little bit so that it um the shadow appears bigger so that the bottom seems like it's bigger and then right up next to it I'm gonna get some black in there so if there's any white showing this is where the black would go now this is where your tree really comes to life and what you do is you grab your brush and I'm grabbing my flat brush this would be a flat if my kids hadn't taken my brush and lost it but you just add in snow so you're gonna dabble and you're gonna add it on the very edges and be inconsistent with your shapes so go on top and then move across like this and skip areas So you can make it as chunky as you want, like in some areas maybe it'll be chunkier, like that. And this is what really, really makes it look like, oh, this is a Christmas tree out in the snow. So I'm going to show you this whole process because this is the key to your tree looking awesome. And I want to show you the inconsistency that is needed. So I'm using just this tip right here and then when I want it to be thicker I'm pushing down more like that. And I'm just letting it be the shape that it's going to be. Now I'm going to skip some areas right here. To give it a good look like hey it didn't hang on to this area right there. Nice little gap. But it really got right here. And it's piled right on that one. See how it starts looking like, oh, <laughs> yeah. This is snow piled on these branches. If you see some shapes that are very similar, you can go back and kind of make them different. Because then it'll start appearing a little bit more cartoonish than you might want. And I have several, I have two other um, Christmas tree tutorials it seems to be what people love to paint for Christmas so I have one for the last couple years even have a watercolor one you can check them out right over here so I like to get a little bit thicker on the bottom because a lot of snow likes to hang out on the bottom it just makes a lot more sense that it's like piled up and sometimes even covered in areas. Okay, so now it's just about adding dimension to this. So I do that with my blue. Just add in a few areas some blue while it's wet no big deal you're just dabbling it in in little spots here and there and this is that turquoise blue that's right through here this kind of makes it look a little more realistic adds in some of that color that also creates harmony and once you come forward there's a lot more contrast so difference between the light and the dark so now i'm going to pull in just a little bit of this darker blue just in some areas. Now I'm going to stay in side not on the outside because that's where the lights hitting. I'm just going to put it in some spots. Not a lot. 
See, it's adding dimension. And that's what you need. You can even have some alone. Like that spot right there. Being creative is so fun. And I hope you're having a good time painting along. I'm just going to take a little bit of my daughter right here. So my fine little brush. And add in some little spots of snow. Just hanging out. And this will help it look a little more realistic as well. Just choose random spots. Now back here I'm just going to add a little bit of dimension on these trees by a little bit of a lighter value. And I'm just going over some of the middle area and pulling down. So it looks like snow's on them too. And the reason why you don't use white is because they're in the distance and there's not going to be much of a difference between that dark and that light color. So underneath this I'm just going to add a little bit more of the dark blue right up against the edge. Now for the star, grab your little detail brush and what we're going to do first is we're going to put white on it and then we will add the gold over because the white will make it so that it, it's more opaque against this dark background. So I'm just going to do a line and then I'm going to have this line and this line going out. And then another line. <laughs> so basically these lines and it pokes out on the edges. So it's thinner on the edges. And I don't worry about it being perfect, but if you want yours to be perfect, just spend a little more time on it. Okay, and then I let that dry. So now I'm gonna take my gold and I'm basically going to be stringing some lights. So I'm going to just do little dots and you can use the back of your brush if you need to. It kind of helps you. And I'm not going to have every little spot so I'm going to um, skip little areas but they're going to be little gold lights going up like this. And these are really going to shine and shimmer just like the gold back here. So yeah, it really pops. And then I go grab my black. I'm going to put a line in between them. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want it to look like string lights. So you're not going to see every little line, especially from the distance, but having just a few is going to give it look, a look like string lights. So this should be dried up here. You can add a layer of gold. Like I said, this will really shimmer. And then what I like to do is I like to take just a little bit of my light blue and go in between with this circle thing. You don't have to do that step, so no big deal if you don't. And since I'm not doing this from a picture, I'm just going to do a couple composition things that I see that I want to change. So I'm just going to make this line right through here. And you can make footprints if you want, or you can just do like a little rolling heel right here. Whatever floats your boat. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit, the shadow. I'm going to add just a little bit of red for a bright color in there for ornaments. So I'll just put some right here, just random places. The other thing I'm going to do is pull this dark color just a little bit more out too. Like I said, this is a painting I made up. So it's kind of one of those things at the end you have to just see. All of these things are just optional for you. And then just a few little blue 
dots in here. And I like to just take a few spots, to add some white to my brush, and make some bigger snowflakes. And then sign your work, and you are done with your shimmery, beautiful painting. Ooh, a gold frame would look really pretty. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you had fun, and I hope you learned a lot, and you got to be creative. If you haven't already, I hope you have by this time. Hit that subscribe button, the bell next to it, so you're notified whenever I make a new video. Hit that share button and share it to your social media because people love free things and you'll be popular if you do. <laughs> okay. Also, sign up to become a Create Flart member if you wish to do so. It helps support my tutorials and you get lovely things from me like weekly art lessons to help you become a better artist, the reference photos, color mixing videos, templates, anything that will help you paint this along with me. And once you're done, just um, watch more videos if you'd like, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!